Hey, what's up guys? We were quite impressed with Huawei's flagship, the P30 Pro, so let's take a look at this smaller Huawei P30. It's missing a few of the higher end features, but with a lower price, is it the better deal? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and this is our Huawei P30 review. The Huawei P30 is made from Gorilla Glass with an aluminum frame, pretty typical for a flagship these days. As you'd expect from Huawei, there are plenty of brilliant color schemes to choose from. Ours is called Breathing Crystal, and it's gorgeous. You can see multiple hues reflected in the shiny finish. Unlike the P30 Pro, the P30 only has an IP53 rating for dust and splash proofing, not full water resistance. So it can handle some raindrops, but better not drop this phone in the pool. The P30 feels sturdy and well made, and with its light, compact size, it's quite easy to use with one hand. At 6.1 inches, the screen of the P30 is a bit smaller than its siblings, but it is indeed an AMOLED with the same 1080p resolution. This screen is flat, not curved at the edges like the Pro model. It's personal preference, but I like this style better, to avoid accidental screen activations while I'm holding it. The selfie cam sits in a small, rounded notch at the top, and you are able to mask it with a black bar, if that's your thing. At 422 ppi, content on the display looks pretty sharp. You have those deep blacks only AMOLEDs can provide, and colors can be decently accurate if you tweak them in settings. Maximum brightness is quite good too, at 449 nits in manual mode, and up to 635 nits in auto mode in bright conditions. Legibility in the sun is great, we had no issues using the phone outdoors. Like most AMOLEDs, you have the option for an always-on display to show you time and notifications while the phone sleeps. There is no option for a notification LED though. Just like the P30 Pro, you can wake up and unlock the P30 with the under-display fingerprint reader. It's really accurate, and its speed is pretty impressive. You can also use face unlock, but it's not quite as secure as your finger. As far as high-tech features go, the P30 is missing the Pro version's under-display acoustic earpiece for calls. Here is the traditional one up on the top bezel. We are a bit disappointed that Huawei didn't take the opportunity to use the earpiece in a stereo speaker setup, but the P20 didn't have one either. The single speaker is next to the USB-C port, its loudness is excellent, and there's no distortion at max volume. The P30 has a 3.5mm jack, unlike the Pro version, so you don't need to worry about using an adapter to plug in headphones. Volume-wise, it's only above average, but it has better stereo separation than its bigger sibling. Our P30 has 128 gigs of onboard storage, though there are options for 64 and 256 gigs depending on where you buy it. It's expandable via the hybrid dual SIM slot, but you need to use one of Huawei's proprietary NM cards, which is kind of limiting. The interface of the P30 is Huawei's EMUI 9.1 over Android 9 Pi. Just like on the P30 Pro, version 9.1 brings a new EROFS file system. Files can be read faster, and operating system files take up less space. As typical of EMUI, all of your apps are kept on the home screen by default, but you can opt to use an app drawer if you want. Swiping down on the home screen opens an app search bar, and a swipe down from the top will get you the notification shade. Swiping to the left opens a Google News Feed. And there is gesture navigation available, which works just as smoothly as on Huawei's other recent devices. Unlike the Pro version, there's no IR blaster on the P30, so you'll have to find some other way to turn on your TV. At the heart of the P30 is Huawei's top-tier Kirin 980 chipset, along with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. Performance is awesome, just like on the P30 Pro, though graphics power is just a little behind the Snapdragon 855. Regardless, everything feels nice and fluid. The P30 Pro comes with GPU Turbo 2.0 as well, which optimizes performance and smooths out frame rates for a few supported games such as PUBG. At 3650mAh, the P30's battery is a bit smaller than the Pro versions, and unfortunately you don't get the same exceptional battery life here. It's still good though, the P30 earned an endurance rating of 83 hours in our proprietary tests, about in the middle of what the competition offers. You can top up the battery with a 22.5 watt Huawei Supercharge. It isn't 40 watts like on the P30 Pro, but it's still really impressive, getting us from 0 to 65% in 30 minutes. You don't get support for wireless charging or reverse charging like you do on the Pro model though. Bummer. The Huawei P30 has a triple camera setup instead of the quad cam we see on the more expensive P30 Pro. There's a 40 megapixel main cam, an 8 megapixel telephoto cam, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera, all with Leica branded lenses. Compared to the Pro model, the main camera's lens isn't as bright at f1.8 instead of f1.6, 
and this one doesn't have OIS. The telephoto camera is borrowed from the Mate 20 Pro, and doesn't have a fancy periscope setup. The ultra-wide-angle camera is a bit different, and there is no TOF cam for depth sensing. Since the main 40 megapixel camera uses a quad bayer filter, the default output is 10 megapixels. In daylight, image quality is great, practically identical to the P30 Pro. There's plenty of detail, pleasing colors, wide dynamic range, and nice rendition. You can opt to shoot in 40 megapixels, though these shots aren't necessarily packing more detail. Certain scenes do benefit from being shot in this mode, and it varies, so it may be worth playing around with. Now onto the ultra wide angle cam. Colors are a bit punchier than on the main cam, and dynamic range isn't quite as wide, but perfectly acceptable. Though its field of view isn't quite as wide as on the P30 Pro, we'd say that in good light, the P30's ultra wide cam is almost as good. You can also use the ultra wide angle cam to shoot in super macro mode, which allows you to focus on objects that are extremely close. If the subject is still and there's plenty of light, you can end up with some really nice results. Even though the telephoto camera can't zoom as far as the periscope one on the P30 Pro, it does a great job. Images come out sharp and detailed. The dynamic range and contrast aren't quite what you get on the main cam, but you still get that nice color rendition. The P30's main cam and telephoto work together in portrait mode. How they interact depends on your zoom level. Regardless of the zoom, portraits have excellent subject separation and very nice background blur. In low light, we expected a bit lower quality from the P30's main camera compared to the Pro version. As it turns out, there's no need to worry. Low light shots are excellent. They're well exposed with nicely preserved highlights, lots of detail, low noise, and nice colors. Night mode is one of our favorite features on this camera. You get brighter night skies and livelier colors, and some recovered detail in highlights and shadows. Compared to the main camera, low light shots with the ultra wide cam aren't very good coming out soft and noisy. Night mode really helps the ultra-wide cam a lot, giving you a brighter exposure, and bringing the quality up from barely usable to pretty decent. If you try to zoom in the dark, the phone either does a digital crop or switches to the telephoto cam, depending on the level of light. Just like with the other cameras, night mode does a good job in improving these too. For selfies, the P30 has the same 32 megapixel front-facing cam as the P30 Pro, which has fixed focus. You have to make sure that the phone is the right distance away from your face in order to get the sharpest result, and it's not necessarily a full arm's length. It does a respectable job nonetheless. There's excellent dynamic range, spot on colors, and plenty of detail. The Huawei P30 can record video with any of its three cams in 4K at 30fps. Electronic stabilization is available on all cameras in all modes, but you can't disable it if you wanted to. Quality-wise, 4K footage from the main camera is quite the same as on the P30 Pro. There's excellent dynamic range, true-to-life color rendition, and great contrast. Resolve detail isn't the best we've seen though, and we wish the image was a bit sharper. Footage from the ultra-wide cam is passable, but not great. Dynamic range and detail are both less than stellar. Videos shot with the telephoto camera let you get close to the action and offer reasonable quality as well. While detail is again not spectacular, there isn't much competition out there that can offer 3x optical zoom. So that's the Huawei P30. You get an eye-catching design, good battery life, a gorgeous display, cutting-edge performance, and a versatile triple camera. But compared to the P30 Pro, you are missing quite a few things, like that curved screen and waterproofing. There's no IR blaster or wireless charging here, and you don't get the in-display earpiece. And as far as the camera goes, you don't have OIS or a TOF camera and just forget about a fancy periscope telephoto cam. But all of that said, all of these things are more of a luxury than a necessity, and definitely not a deal breaker for most people. And since you're saving at least 150 euros here, the P30 is worth considering over the more expensive model. Even with its compromises, this is one of the best flagships you can get right now, and it definitely deserves our recommendation. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.